Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having a great day today. I'm very excited that I get to share what I'm gonna to share today. Uh, we're gonna to be talking about focus of attention and what should your attention be on when you practice and what things should your attention not be on when you practice an instrument. I first became aware of the research surrounding focus of attention in January 2021 when I attended the Body, Mind, Spirit workshop hosted by Jeremy Wilson and Karen Kibitis. In it, Jeremy Jeremy shared with us that there are two different types of focus of attention, one being external or outside of the body and one being internal or the body itself. The studies found that whatever you were focused on had a pretty big impact on your overall level of performance and learning. Spoiler alert, uh, an external focus of attention is always superior to an internal focus of attention they found. And I wanna go over this article that is titled Attentional Focus and Motor Learning. Learning, a review of 15 years by Gabriella Wolf. I think that's how you say her name. Uh, it was in the International Review of Sport and Exercise Psychology, published September 24th, 2012. We're not gonna go over this entire article in this video. Rather, I just wanna share a few different quotes from the article that really got me thinking about the importance of an external focus of attention and what it might look like for musicians. So as we go along here, the very first thing that I thought was really interesting is over here under external versus internal focus of attention. And it says, interestingly, and in contrast to other variables studied in the motor learning literature, a person's attentional focus often has a similar influence on both the immediate performance, i.e. during the practice phase when focus instructions are given, and learning, which reflects a more permanent change in the capability to perform a skill and is measured by retention or transfer tests, i.e. after a certain interval and without instructions or reminders. What this is basically saying is that they notice that when you change the focus of attention of somebody in the immediate time of giving them the instruction, they show improvement right away. But then they also showed that with that external focus of attention, they were able to retain it better over time without instruction, essentially making it their own and something that they can drive and focus on long term. I've seen this in various students that I've worked with and various master classes that I've done, where if I just shift someone's focus from thinking about themselves playing the music or maybe thinking about, you know, their stomach expanding when they breathe or maybe their fingers when they're playing, just focusing on something like the way that the air is passing their lips, I've noticed an immediate ability to play more consistently with more refinement. And then also when I talk to some of these people later, it seems as though they're able to hold on to this information long term and be able to use it in their uh, playing and that it actually has established that as a, a skill that they can rely on in their performance. Down here under generalizability across measures of performance, this last sentence of this paragraph says, together these results provide evidence that an external focus speeds up the learning process, thereby enabling performers to achieve a higher level of expertise sooner. I love this statement because it should get us all thinking that what is our focus? What are we focused on when we're playing our instruments? And if it's not external, how could we shift it to something external for the sole purpose of being able to speed up our learning? If this claim is correct, which it sounds like it's backed by evidence, and you can read this article to see what evidence is there, it's amazing to me that we all aren't thinking more often, what is my practice and is it the most efficient, the most optimal way for me to learn. On the next page, under the heading of learning enhancements, it says at the very first sentence, it is also important to point out that an external focus of attention enhances learning as opposed to an internal focus degrading learning. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read something like this, it makes me think I gotta make sure that my focus of attention when I'm practicing, when I'm playing, when I'm performing is external because it says here that an internal focus will degrade learning. None of us wanna go backwards. So we should all be thinking pretty deeply about the external focus of attention and where it's at. Again, for me, it's something as simple as feeling the air passing my lips is enough to get me into that external focus of attention and more towards long-term learning. The final two points that we're gonna go over are related to the distance effect in this section here. 
In this section, there's this sentence that says, McNevin and colleagues argued that a more distal focus makes the movement effect more easily distinguishable from the body movements that create the effect than a more proximal focus. What this is saying is distal being far away, proximal being close to you. If you can have an external focus of control that is further away in some capacity, and we're gonna go over an example in just a second, but the further away it is, the easier your body is able to distinguish what it is that you're doing externally from the body itself. I like this example right here where it says, Bell and Hardy's study demonstrated greater accuracy in hitting golf balls when the focus was on the ball trajectory and landing point. That's an example of a distal focus of attention compared to the club, which is a proximal. So both of these are external to the body, but there's greater accuracy the further away that you think. The reason I find this interesting is in a video that I made a long time ago titled Four Steps to a Bigger, Fuller Sound, I outlined this exercise where you would play some phrase or some scale and you would first stare at a stand that's right in front of you and then you would look across the street and then maybe you'd close your eyes and think of something that's really, really far away, My miles and miles away. You're envisioning your sound starting at each of these points that are far away. And this is basically scientific evidence saying that yes, the stand is external to your body, but your sound becomes fuller and more complex and more resonant the further away you're able to think. Before we get to the final point, uh, if you've enjoyed this video, if you found it interesting, you found it thought provoking, I would appreciate it if you would give it a like down below. If you wanna see more content like this, make sure you click the subscribe button down below so that you can be notified of when future content is available. This final point here I'm gonna make comes from the heading Future Directions. And it's just right here at the beginning where it says, while the behavioral and neurophysiological effects of external versus internal foci of attention appear to be quite clear and consistent, some questions remain. An intriguing issue is the distance effect. We just talked about that. While the physical distance of the external focus from the body appears to play a role in enhancing the external focus benefits, for example, Mark Workers on a balance platform at different distances from feet, a more distant movement effect sometimes also represents a higher hierarchical movement goal. For example, a golf club motion versus ball trajectory. As Valaker and colleagues pointed out, with an increase in skill level, actions tend to be monitored at higher hierarchical levels. A challenge for future research will be to disentangle these potential influences and how the distance or hierarchy of the external focus might interact with performers' level of expertise. The reason that I find this interesting is that in my own education and in various pedagogical methodologies I've come across, oftentimes you'll hear people saying you wanna hear the sound that you want in your head or to hear the music that you want, to be a part of the music, whatever. You want your focus of attention to be on the sound or the music that you're making. If we wanna use the language from this particular paragraph, let's call that the top hierarchy. We're saying that this is as far away as of a distance as you can get from your body because it has nothing to do with your body, it has to do with the sound. Now, I think ultimately this is where everybody should be. Everybody wants to get to this place where you're hearing what you want in your head and your body is able to create that with a level of automaticity. But there are also other foci of attention that are external that could be valuable to you that may be lower in the hierarchy. And we shouldn't dismiss those because it's not necessarily the highest one in the hierarchy. What I'm saying is that depending on your skill level, your focus of attention might not be the same as somebody else's focus of attention who is more skilled than you. Someone who is an expert in our field or an incredible performer who's been doing it for a long time might be able to manage the top hierarchy with success. But some of us who are not up there might have to be thinking about a different focus of attention, trying to establish that as the way we play or making that become more automatic and then possibly move to more distance, move further away in the way that we're thinking about things to be able to find that kind of success at the top level of the hierarchy. All right, everyone, that's going to be all for this video. I hope that this article and the short discussion we had about it has been thought provoking for you to think about your focuses of attention in your practice sessions and whether or not you are thinking externally. And if not, maybe there's progress that can be had immediately that will aid your long term learning on your instrument. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you haven't seen that video I referenced earlier, the four steps to a bigger, fuller sound, I'm going to link that on the screen. You can check that out. We'll see you in the next video.